Welcome to OMB Warehouse and Facebook Live. You're coming direct from the Gray Goat Garage. I'm Eric. I'm the Gray Goat. I am help at ombwarehouse.com. Um, I don't know everything, but uh, I do know a little bit. And uh, Kevin and Michael, how are you guys? Good to see you. Randy Gumpet, my sound check guy. How you doing, brother? Um, good to see you guys back. Uh, thanks for spending your uh, Thursday evening with me. And, um, oh, my, the thriller is here, uh, Michael Ray and Karen, the queen of seats. Uh, Vernon, yeah, we're going to talk about you tonight, brother. Yeah, and Easy E, uh, <laughs> Tom, I hope you're doing better. Um, you know, I know that neck brace thing's got to not be great. So um, welcome to old age, brother. Um, I, I get that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't recover like I used to. So anyway, tonight we've got breaking news. And um, we, uh, of course, we have Quizzo questions for your chance to win prizes. That's right. Directly from the Grey Goat Garage, we will have prizes for you. Um, we uh, will be an uh, asking a, a series of five questions. Whoever gets the most answers correct um, will win a prize. Uh, if uh, you get to the point where we have a five-way tie, which has happened before, um, I've got a bonus question, too. So we'll work on that. So anyway, I'm going to post up a link here of some uh, products that we're going to talk about tonight. And um, as, as you guys know, I'm not just all about uh, promoting products. Uh, of course, that's why we're here. But, um, you know, we want to make sure that uh, we're getting new products out to you and products that uh, you haven't seen or don't know about. And, uh, you know, that, that's why we hang out here. So I've got a link posted up there for you. So you can go ahead and, and check it out. Uh, Tim Coughlin is in the house. Uh, fine individual, just had a birthday. Happy birthday, Tim. Um, anyway, yeah, Tom England, prizes. Yeah, we give away prizes here, okay? Not just my pretty face. I know for a lot of you that's enough payment, but we can't just do that. So um, tonight, um, Vernon Adams sent me some uh, heat shrink or heat wrap for uh, my header. And uh, I thought I was going to do a little comparison on that versus what is uh, commonly available out there. So I'll show you them one at a time. I've got a, a Predator header that I've uh, mocked up, and uh, I've got the zip tie on that. And I'm not going to leave the zip tie on there, so don't break my back on that one. Um, so here, here's the header with uh, Vernon's wrap that he sent me. And uh, I use stainless uh, clamps. These got the little ball in the end that you just pull on them snug, and they, they look good. And once it's on the bike, you won't even see the bottom part of it. Um, but I don't know that I'm real happy with that. And next week, we're going to talk about safety wire and the safety wire pliers. So um, I've got the, that stuff coming in, and, and I'm going to learn how to do it, hopefully, before uh, you guys uh, get your hands to, uh, you know, rip me up a little bit. So uh, th this is uh, Vernon's wrap. It looks really good. It, um, I, I wondered how Vernon did it, but it's a very thin wrap. Uh, once you stretch it, it's about three-eighths of an inch wide. You can butt it up together nice. Uh, I think this was uh, stove welting or, you know, stove insulation for around like a wood stove door. Um, but worked very well. I am concerned about it uh, fuzzing up a little bit, you know, because I, I like to go pet my bikes on occasion. So this this is going on the Brumsa engine. And I've got my Mini 91 welded on the back, uh, painted it black. I like to have some paint underneath the, the coating so it doesn't rust as fast. I know it's going to rust, but, um, you know, got, got this one done, looks good. But uh, I took one of our underseat pipes, and I cut it off and got this funky little muffler on there. This is going on my daughter's bike. She's never going to ride it. It's never going to go fast. It's got a very small outlet on the end. Um, it looks to be five-eighths of an inch maybe. So this muffler will choke it out. I know you can't see it, but I drilled a hole straight through the, the baffle in the center. On these sausage mufflers where it's crimped right here, the exhaust comes out, and there's there's baffling around here in the tube, and then there's the material that, that dampens the noise. But right here, there's what's called a diffuser plate. So the exhaust essentially is deadheading into that plate right there, and then it forces it out around through the material and then out the end. Um, with the hole inside there, yeah, it's going to make it a little bit louder. But uh, we'll, we'll see how it uh, goes once uh, once the, the Blue Bayou Doodlebug is done. Um, we'll, we'll be showing this. 
um, I got the zip tie on there. Don't break my back for that. That's coming off. That's just to show you um, how, how the uh, average header wrap looks. And in the link that I provided for you, you you'll see some uh, sleeves. And that's the high temperature silicone header sleeves. Those are very, very effective, but they're not for every pipe. Um, I, I've yet to find that product that'll fit over the inch and five sixteenths on the staged headers. And um, it, it, it'll, it'll burn a little bit. And even, even with, with this header tape that I've had for years or with this, once you first start running your vehicle, it, it's going to burn a little bit and it's going to off gas and don't worry about it uh, unless your engine's running really horribly um, it's nothing to worry about it's just part of the nature of that wrap i like the wrap because last time i was screwing around in the shop with old man hint i burnt my hand right here and i went out and gosh it took a month to heal i think um you know dried out got nasty and burns are horrible so anytime anything we can do to protect ourselves against burns like the header wrap or the sleeves that's a great idea and you know the the methodology behind that is that it, it helps keep some of the heat in that pipe keeps the the, the velocity up and i i don't know that i'm buying into that uh, i see a lot of it done and mo mostly it's done just for protection but um you know the the, the hardcore racers say there is some benefit to the header wrap to keep more heat in that pipe, keep the velocity up, and it makes more power. I don't know. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know that that's verifiable. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the way this turned out. And I think instead of using the stainless clamps on this, because I wound this, this end real tight, so it, it's not going anywhere right now. But I think I'm going to use safety wire on this and make two loops with safety wire. And we're going to show that next week. And on, on next week's show, I've got a lot of high performance stuff to show you guys. So we're, uh, I'm, I'm getting ready for Joe's mini bike reunion next year and uh, beat up those guys out there in Arizona because they think that they make all the power. And, you know, so uh, ho hopefully the old man can show them a thing or two. Um, next thing you'll notice on the link is um, kill switches. And a, a kill switch is very important, uh, especially for younger riders. And there, there's uh, multiple different types of kill switches. Um, the, the ones I like are the push button ones, like on the link that came on the Baja bikes. Great big red button. You push it. It's positive. It, it locks. It kills it. And everybody's safe, especially for younger riders um, or, or accident-prone people like me. Um, the push button switches, you have to push that and hold that till the engine's done rotating. Cause if you just push it, it ain't going to happen like that. So, you know, you have to push and hold that in some emergency situations. That's not always the best deal. Um, I, I'm always buying old stuff. Um, you guys know that I uh, make gaskets as a hobby and this is off of an engine that I got that I, uh, took the engine apart just so I could make the gaskets from it. But you'll notice it's got the on-off switch right here. And these old on-off switches off these old engines, I like them because you can't go to the hardware store and buy one. All right, so let me get this little bezel off and drop this out of here. So these old-time switches actually and you probably won't be able to see that but they have the on and off upside down they have the on and off in the correct positions whereas your common hardware store switch that although it says on and off it's backwards for us and i don't know how many times i've had to grind that little tab out of there just to flip this around just so it reads correctly so the old vintage engines um you know, I always strip parts. Uh, Mrs. Goat tells me I'm a hoarder. Um, maybe I am. But uh, so, something like this, and this will actually probably go on Mrs. Goat's uh, Krusty Gilson when it's uh, back from powder coat. Had everything welded up uh, over the holiday break, and uh, it's in the back of the truck just uh, waiting to get a little time to get down to the coder. So, yep, we're going to go fancy orange on that with some sparkles. So, anyway... As always, 
I always like to say hi to our friends out at ARC Racing. Um, those guys are great. They make great products, and we'll be showing a lot of their products next week. So, Jody, a little cup for you, okay? The, the, this is the OMB Cup, and this is the Jody Cup because, um, you know, those kart racers, they're little tiny guys. So, ARC, thank you. Let's get on to the first question. We're going to start this one early because I've already kind of given you some hints, and I almost gave gave up the answer. This blower housing from this old two-stroke engine, I'm going to make a clutch cover for the yellow bike I'm building, the old trail ram, that I'm going to call the big banana. But uh, I've made one of these before and didn't use it, sold it on eBay. Um, this is aluminum. I've, uh, you know, hit it a little bit there. It, it will polish up real nice. I'm going to buy a round cover for here, bolt it on through the through the recoil bolt holes. And uh, th this will make a good looking uh, uh, torque converter cover for the for the front of the um, big banana. I, I like these because I'm repurposing something. Um, it's unique and it's different. Anybody can do this stuff. I'm just a, a dumb fat guy in the garage. So if I can do it, you can do it, okay? So this part came off of, of an engine, little two-stroke. What company manufactured this part? What's the name of the company that manufactured this part? For you old two-stroke guys or you old guys, this should be uh, easy for you. But, um, nope, not Clinton. Justin Eichler in the house, brother. Look at that. That's from a Power Products, what's called a PP1000. So there was actually two versions of this. Um, one rotated one direction and the other rotated the other direction. So it had a different arrow at the top. And, um, you know, instead of this hanging out the back, it hung off the, the opposite side. So... I was lucky enough to score one for the correct side to look correct on the engine. I don't have one turned around now. So that's going to be my torque converter cover uh, that goes on the Bregumsa engine on the big banana. All right. So look forward to this. I'll, I'll show you this as I, as I start building it. My problem is I got too many projects. Just like you guys, you know, my, my, my time in the garage is limited. You know, you got to always kind of have that balance between family and, and work and everything else. You know, so many people think that, um, oh, yeah, the Grey Goat uh, Garage, yeah, that guy just hangs out in his garage all day and, and works on minibike stuff. Nah, because I'm help at ombwarehouse.com. I spend my days helping you to not make the same mistakes that I made because I've made plenty of them. So um, don't want to document too many of them, but um, a lot of them, you know, I show you guys here. So anyway, Power Products 1000, Justin, good call on that one. And uh, let, let's move on. Um, we have a lot of parts because that's what we do. Um, I, I think I totaled it up one time and, and the number was staggering how many parts um, we have just for go-karts and minibikes and performance engine stuff. But there's a lot of parts that you don't know about. Um, these are included in the link, and these are a bargain, and I love them. These are RUP one-inch foot peg covers. But they don't have to go on a RUP, right? They can go on anything that has a one-inch foot peg. So I know I'm going to have to make some foot pegs for the trail ram because it had some funky one that – you know, had, had an arm and a stop and, and all this stuff. So we'll, I'm going to get that laid out here pretty soon. And uh, Mr. Pat will be getting a call from me to use his uh, his um, plasma cutter or whatever it is. But uh, five bucks for foot peg, foot peg covers that are real grippy and sticky. But also in the link, for you old school guys, we've got the Hunt Wild. They look alike. They're not, they're not Hunt Wild brand. But it's a, they, they look exactly the same. A lot of times these are too long for a lot of different applications. But if you take a razor blade and some soapy water and cut in the ribs, you can make a perfect cut on these. So these we have all the time, and uh, they're, they're in the link that I provided. So um, 
I really like these. Even if you had 7 8 peg, I'd, I'd wrap it with something and then force these on there just because they're so grippy. They got the little nub at the end so your foot doesn't slide off. I've used these on several bikes, and um, I, I like these a lot. So a bargain price, too. They're nice rubber. They're, they're not uh, not all old and checked out and everything. The rubber's still pliable. It, it's soft and bendy, and you can do whatever you want with these. So I, I like these. Good price and uh, available. Uh, follow the link, ombwarehouse.com. If you need help with anything, um, it's a double-edged sword for us to have so many items that sometimes it's hard to navigate because there is so many items. <coughs> Excuse me. If you look at the left-hand side of the page, there's a drop-down menu. <clears throat> Under each section, there's an arrow, which will drop down and expand to another section. And then like like uh, performance engine parts, arrow down, it gets Predator 212. Then arrow down, um, you'll click on 212, and then you'll have a, an entire sub-menu on the side. So it'll try and get you there. We do our best to try and make sure that the navigation is easy for you. Um, it, it, it's always very challenging, but sometimes I struggle to find stuff. So, you know, when that happens, who gets to fix it? Yeah, that's right, me. So I do my best to fix all that stuff. If you need help finding anything, I am help at ombwarehouse.com. So just send me a, send me a message um, through the help desk. Help at ombwarehouse.com. Say, hey, Greg Goat in the subject line and i'll get to you you know i, I uh, do a lot of emails every day and i'm helping a lot of people out with a lot of different stuff but i will get to you i promise that, that that's my promise to you okay another thing that we have included in that link is this jewel here now this is new old stock baja throttle kit for the mb200 Comes with a, a dummy grip that's outside the package because Baja was real weird about selling their parts. Um, I, I, I told uh, the management that our price is too cheap on these. Do they listen to me? No. They just say, shut up, sit in your office, and do your job. They don't talk to me like that. Come on now. But anyway, in the package, you'll find the grips already on the inner throttle tube. And this is nice plastic. It's not, it's not that, that cheap, cheap, cheap stuff. It's heavy-duty plastic. Um, but it comes with the outer um, cover for the throttle. And it comes with a throttle cable. And, boy, they wrap these things up tight. But don't be uptight when you're unwrapping them because that's not cool. We don't want you uptight. We want you cool. Because I'm easy like a Sunday morning. So we'll unwrap this. And because it's cold here at the, at the SoCal studios of uh, the Grey Go Garage, um, this will straighten out with a little heat and a little love. So once you get this straightened out, you've got a brand new throttle cable that goes right into this brand new throttle. Let's pull that out a little bit just so we can get it threaded in. But the beauty of this, dude, it's $9.99 for a throttle, okay? It's a side, it's a angle pull throttle. It's $9.99. This is built for the Baja bikes going on to the um, the 196cc clone engine, but this will go on anything. It's plenty long enough. I think it's got to be three feet long at least, but um, gives you a lot of opportunity and a lot of options. But this also fits the Coleman bikes, the Doodle Bugs, anything with a 7 8 inch handlebar because that's what came on the Baja bikes. So th this is a, a smoking deal for anybody that needs a throttle and wants a, uh, <coughs> a side pull throttle, 10 bucks. I don't get it, but what do I know? I'm just an old gray goat. So we'll put this back together. But everything comes here, and unlike so many parts, instructions? get out of here forget about it we got them there's instructions here too so for you coleman guys when you break your throttle we've got them um for the rest of us we got throttles with cables 10 bucks you can't buy a throttle for that price but you know it comes with the with with the housing 
both grips and um, still nice and rubbery, pliable. Complete kit, 10 bucks. Forget about it. You can't beat that, right? Not with the stick. So anyway, now on to braking news. A lot of the vintage bikes that we see out there have a lot of different handles on them. And I, I've got a whole bunch of handles here um, that, that, you know, part, part, part of the GOAT collection. And you'll notice I got this uh, aluminum piece here that's very similar to this aluminum piece here. And these would have been um, virtually the same as what you find on a Coleman or a Doodlebug. Um, but one thing I want you to notice about these is the hole is smaller than the standard old cherry looking levers that we sell. I, I've, I've got a couple different ones here. <clears throat> um, I, I don't prefer the ball end. I, I like the spoon end because, um, you know, I'm not a baller, more of a spooner. But um, th this is indicative of what you see on uh, the old vintage mini bikes. And we have these. These are included in the links. Um, we have both sizes, 7 8 and 1 inch, um, depending on whether you're a, uh, you know, a Rupp guy or a, a uh, Bonanza guy. But uh, we have all these in stock, um, fair priced. But they take a, a larger barrel on the end. The, the smaller aluminum take a smaller ball like that, or smaller barrel, whereas the old vintage style chrome levers take the larger uh, 0.370 diameter uh, barrel in there. So it's important to make sure that when, when you're buying what you need to buy, that you get the right cable to the right handle. Um, there, there's also another variant, and th this is not an exact reproduction, but this is all I have here, an exact example, is these old bicycle-type levers. And a lot of the Rutmans would have had these and maybe some early tacos that are similar to this. And you'll notice in the end of this that it's got this, this groove with a hole. Well, so many people buy a cable like this and say, how does this attach? It just stays loose. We got a solution for that. You know that. The way these, a lot of these older older bikes like the Rutmans and the Tacos would have had a cable that had a tiny end on it like this. Okay. Well, this actually fits down into this piece here. It doesn't snap fit. You have to actually spread this apart and then clamp it back down to get everything in there. But that would allow this little piece here will allow you to run a cable like this. Oh, I don't have a, a free ended cable, damn it. Sorry about that. But this will allow the conduit to butt up into the inside of this to use those old school style brake levers. Um, any of you that are on oldminibikes.com, I just sent um, Smud Vapor one of one of those uh, throttle or those brake uh, lever assemblies um, for his bike. So this is what you need to use a standard cable into the smaller style lever. And see this this doesn't even fit in there. This this was more like a throttle cable type. And you know once you get the uh, that insert in here, then what I do is get the cable inside the lever, thread it through through that little um, piece here, and then put the conduit in there. So um, I anything can happen and anything is possible. Um, for so many people, it's not even probable, but that's because they don't know the gray goat and they don't know to uh, send an email to help at ombwarehouse.com because that's what I do. And I, I've made every mistake in mini biking, and um, I've got a whole garage full of mistakes. And uh, I want to make sure that you guys aren't using the same mistakes that that, that I've had to, to muster through. Um, I, I'm not a guy that likes to send stuff back. So, you know, I've got a garage full of stuff. So that, that's a, a lot of what we're showing here. Um, the beer, of the, the Kool-Aid of the week. Um, tonight, we're, we're going to uh, sample um, an offering from the Belching Beaver Brewery. This is the Miso Honey Blonde. 
So tonight, um, you know, Mrs. Goat, she's trying to watch my figure because I know she checks me out. But um, we're, we're, we're trying to, you know, watch it. So she says, just one beer, Pap, uh, mister. And uh, I say, okay, one beer. So tonight, the one beer is Belching Beaver Brewery Miso Honey Blonde. Okay, and underneath it says, Ale Brewed with Honey. So we're going to use the Grey Goat OMB Warehouse Bottle Opener. Oh, that's nice. Has a nice bouquet. All right. So, it's, oh, now see, I'm a light Pilsner type guy. So this, this is working for me already. So let's let the foam settle down on that. And I'm not an IPA drinker. And like last week, I didn't drink a whole one. So I can't, I can't do it. Uh, too, too, too much for the old man. And um, I got to be fresh, right? Because I am help at OMBWarehouse.com. So when you need answers, you don't want me all hung over. You know, if you want to spend money building an engine or something, we can't have that. So we won't do that. So we'll wait. We'll wait for that to settle down a little bit. Um, tonight's winner will also be getting the often coveted Gray Go Garage retail sticker in lovely chrome foil, etched in black. And look at that. That's sweet, right? Okay, like me on Facebook. That's important for me. And um, just went lever throttle. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, Barry Evans, no, we don't make a mini bike with wide tires. Um, you know, we, uh, it, 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 it's something that um, we, we like to uh, think about, but. That, that's real, real hard. And, um, you know, it's so many of these mini bikes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm building up a big engine that I'll be showing next week on the show. And, um, I don't know what bike I'm going to put it on. I originally thought I was going to do it on the silver bullet bike. Um, but I, I don't know too much work. Um, uh, cause I want to put some, uh, a big tire on the back. So, um, Victoria just sent me a, an email and saying that, um, we have, We'll be doing more and more with YouTube. Um, we've got a YouTube channel that I'd love for you to subscribe to. It's um, OMB Warehouse and the Grey Goat Garage. We're going to uh, step things up and start doing more YouTube videos. And um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, you guys, I know you miss me, so you'll see more of me. So anyway, let's, let's try the Miso Honey Blonde. Very delightful. Zero hoppy taste at the end. Nice clean finish. Um, easy to drink and smooth. Um, I, I think the miso honey blonde will become part of the stable here for, for on those nights that uh, I can let my hair down and, uh, you know, have a whole beer or five. I mean, Kool-Aid. Sorry for you younger viewers. Um yeah, the Miso Honey Blonde, it, it, it is quite delightful. And uh, it, maybe it's the OMB Cup. I don't know. But uh, it is delightful. Oh, ooh, mm, mm, nice. That's okay. We talked about some vintage stuff. And let, let's get to another question, and then I'll show you some vintage stuff that I picked up. And um, it's not mini bike related. But we don't care. If, if it works, it's lovely. Okay, so the OMB Warehouse Clutch Band Break. What size band does that come with? The OMB Warehouse Clutch Band Break. What size band does that come with? I'm sorry I'm making this stuff so easy for you guys. You know, it's not like we provided links to that stuff or anything. So what size band break? Nope, Vernon, sorry, brother. Nope, Randy, sorry, brother. Um, you guys can dance around that for a little bit. But uh, the clutch brake kits, um, I don't know. If, uh, let's see. First one in the house, Easy e Eric Lowry, four inch, because that goes around the, the four and an eighth inch drum just fine. 
and that's one thing, uh, you know, I get a lot of questions, you know, hey, I've got a, a four and a half inch drum. Which band do I get? Well, I back it up and go to four to three sixteenths. Because if you go bigger than that, it won't clamp down. If you go smaller than that, it's going to clamp all the time. So um, we include the four inch band with our clutch brake kits. If you haven't used one of our kits yet, you need to check those out. Um, I, I've got a bike that has a drum brake on it, and me being um, tiny as I am, it doesn't stop for beans. But uh, that clutch band brake, whoop, I'm locking it up, baby. So, you know, it, it makes a, a great secondary brake, and um, you, you can always, uh, you know, you use uh, duplicitous brakes, like an emergency brake, if you will. So it'll stop you in a hurry. Um, so, so many people now are, we sell a lot of steel wheel combos and the steel wheel is hard to get a decent break on those because it's just a flange and you, you can put a, a drum on there for a band break, but it's very difficult. And, um, you know, it's difficult to set up a band break rear break on a mini bike that didn't already have it. So with, with that, with that being said, you can use the kit for the, the clutch brake kit. And uh, those work fantastic. That, that is a great way to go. Um, very solid product and, and very nice. So easy E, good grab on that one. Just got to take my notes. Got to see what's going on, right? So anyway, back to the vintage stuff. You know, I'm got to spend some time with Mrs. Goat all the time. And uh, I love Mrs. Goat. And I, I would spend every minute of every day for the rest of my life with her. She is a, a great woman and she puts up with my junk. So um, I love that. But, you know, she says, hey, you coming out of the garage tonight? That The essence of that is, yeah, I'm coming out of the garage tonight. Sorry, honey. Um, happy wife equals happy life. So um, got to take care of Mrs. Goat, spend time with the children's. So, you know, I, I come in every once in a while, but then I'll be cruising my phone or I'll get onto eBay. And um, for the, uh, the bike I'm calling the Big Banana, I picked up this tank here. Um, it, it's nasty on the inside, and uh, I, I'm going to do the muriatic acid to it. Then I'm going to send it to Sam Bennett, and Sam's going to run this through the, the tumbler and get it spotless clean and ready for paint. Um, got a couple dings uh, in, in it here, but uh, I've got a buddy that works at a body shop, and he's going to do this upright for me, and it'll look pretty when it's done. So um, I like this tank, but it's got this odd mounting on the bottom, right? So I'm going to have to make brackets for this. Um, it, it's a nice big tank. It will feed the Bergumsa just fine, um, give me a long range, but um, I'm going to have to fab up some brackets. So yeah, as like I did on the on the Krusty Gilson, I'll show you the brackets that I came up with and, and how I'm going to do it. But one thing I'm going to do is there's no space at the back of the bike to, to put anything. So, but I've got these round bars there. And I know I've shown you guys these before. I love them. They, they were just on sale. We have them at a great price. They're chrome clamps, but they've got these inserts on the inside. For different size bars right oh you can see how chilly it is here at the southern california gray goat warehouse but um i'm going to use two of these mounted like this on the bar and then i'll just run my struts i'll bend them and run them up to the bottom of that tank to clear the engine and to get high enough to clear the bars when i'm turning so a lot of uses for these if you needed a, a stop for a break this will work for you clamp it onto the rear of the frame Tighten the stuffing out of this nut. You'll have some threads left over on the end. Put a rod on here and, you know, put the, the, a flat piece of rod back to your brake uh, to hold your brake and then put another nut on the outside. The, these will clamp down quite a, quite a bit, and I've used these. These um, are also being used on the Krusty Gilson as the rear fender mounts at the front of the engine by the jack shaft. So I mounted it right to, to the, um, the shaft on the, the flywheel because I'm not on the, on the swing arm, because everything's mounted to the swing arm. So th these are inexpensive, multiple uses. Um, if, if you wanted to mount something on your handlebars, this is a perfect addition for that. They're cheap. We got a lot of them, and uh, we'd love for you to have some. So they're, they're in the link that I provided, and I'll throw that link up again. 
bear with me. I, as a lot of you know, I'm computer illiterate. So, you know, I'm working on my literacy skills, you know, and my interpersonal skills. So we'll, we'll, we'll get it. Um, so like me on Facebook. I like when those, those blue thumbs come up. So um, Charles Mosley, the king of horsepower is in the house. Um, I, I saw Charles post uh, uh, just today, when's it going to stop raining? It's been raining hard for three days here in Southern California. Feel bad for those folks up in the hills um, in, in those giant houses, um, multi-million dollar places that are sliding off. That, that's really unfortunate. Um, a lot of the burn areas, a lot, lot, lot of people uh, in trouble here because of the rain. But um, us flatlanders, I love it. It's like liquid sunshine for me. Cheers. The other vintage tank I picked up off eBay, got it for a deal, was this old chainsaw gas tank. And um, you can see that the caps rusted through, but caps are easy to find. You just got to know the diameter. And, you know, it's the same cap. It's probably a Briggs cap, um, but it has two outlets. There's two chambers in this tank. Um, the one chamber with the, with the shutoff, that was for fuel and the other chamber was for oil for a chainsaw so this this fed the oiler but think about the guys running methanol that want to purge their system all they got to do is get uh, plumb this into a two-way valve run it off your 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 methanol when you're running then when you want to purge with gasoline then hit the other side just turn turn the valve hit the other side so what a great little tank this would be for a, for a nice little drag bike that I'm um, talking to Temecula Bob, Bob about. Um, so this stuff is out there. You can find this stuff. You got to look for it. You got to keep searching, but uh, it is out there. And, um, you know, especially anything that has, has run premix because there's oil in the gas, the insides are typically always pretty clean. I don't know that I've ever looked into this one yet. Yeah, it's not that clean, but uh, th this will hit the muriatic acid bath as well. And, um, uh, you know, I, I talk about muriatic acid, and if you're planning on using it, I want you to plan on being very, very careful. It, it gives off a gas that, that's that's um, very poisonous, and be careful with it. it. It's not stuff to mess around with. Um, you can buy it at any hardware store. Um, it's not locked up, which it should be. But um, very, very effective in cleaning um, steel stuff. Don't put aluminum in there. Don't put brass or any, any soft metals in there because it'll eat it alive and it'll be gone. So um, only, only for steel, and I'll use that to clean those two tanks up, and th those will be um, very nice pieces when they're done. Um, we're going to go back to kill switches after we uh, have another question. I got dirt on my hands, and I hate my hands dirty. That's why all my stuff's so clean, because I hate my dirty hands. Um, you guys ready? Let's get your Googles on. Um, yeah, Daniel, I'm loving the rain too, brother. Um, yeah, Vernon, dangerous stuff. So be careful if you're going to play with muriatic acid. Um, wear safety protection. Wear rubber gloves. Wear face protection. Wear a respirator. And keep it away from chrome. I made a mistake one time that I, that I had my – Gosh, the muriatic acid that I was storing was in a sealed container, and it was close to chrome, and it ate the chrome. Um, very, very nasty stuff. Dispose of it properly if you're going to use it, and uh, make, make sure you're very, very careful with that. Um, Patrick is called muriatic, and it's spelled M-U-R-I-A-T-I-C. Um, pool supplies will have that. My pool guy puts it in the pool. Um, kills all the nasty stuff, I guess. I don't know. But uh, muriatic acid, it, uh, it will clean metal like nobody's business. Don't soak it for too long. If you're going to put stuff in there, pull it out and check it. If it's still rusty, you know, maybe knock some of the big chunks down, set it back in there. Don't let it go for more than a couple hours. Um, and uh, be careful with, uh, with soft metals. It, it'll eat some stuff up. So I've got a brass plug in that, uh, that the, the, the triangle tank. And um, that'll have to come out before I dip this. And I, I'm wondering about this fixture here, what that is. I'm hoping it's steel. Um, haven't got that deep into it yet. But um, a lot of cool-looking tanks on eBay. This is off a um, some sort of garden tractor, I think. 
It's got a couple nice uh, nice mounting points here that I can use and the, the three-way mounting point there. So I'm sure I can get this on the uh, big banana and have it be solid. Um, that That's a big thing with gas tanks. I don't screw around. I like to have them placed right, but they got to be solid, okay? No more zip ties and rope and uh, bungee cords on there. We don't like that. So anyway, get your Googles ready. Let's get on to the next question. Briggs, three and a half horsepower engine, right? Shares a piston with what other common Briggs engine? Glad, glad I could help you, Daniel. Um, yeah, the, the three three point fives. Uh, they're nice little engines, and and they are powerful. Um, and Clay, thank you for that. I uh, I will look into phosphoric acid too. Um, one one thing about you know I don't like going and, and buying acid. Um, Randy Blue in the house, five horsepower Briggs. Sorry, I'm making notes. Um, Randy Blue got it. Um, the piston in the three and a half horsepower, not the three, but the three and a half horsepower Briggs, that is the same exact piston that the five horsepower Briggs used. And that brings me to the next subject. Okay. So the three and a half horsepower, not the three, the later three and a half horsepower shared the same piston as the um, Briggs five horsepower Raptor style engines. I got to thinking, you know, a lot of a lot of guys. There was a guy saying uh, on uh, old mini bikes a while back that he was going to make rods for for three horsepower um, Briggs engines, billet rods. Th this is a um, just a standard cast rod that uh, I knocked down the edges and had Sam Cambo 61 at Yahoo.com. I had him burnish this for me. He burnished this one as well. Uh, I don't know that I. I didn't spend a lot of time on the beams on these. I didn't want to de degrade it too far. But um, I, I just have these because I like shiny stuff. Um, I got to measuring on this, and the five horsepower rod is uh, about um, uh, 0 0.550, 550 thousandths longer than the two horsepower rod. So I asked myself, Myself, how would I get a billet rod into a three horsepower Briggs? Well, if I find a stroker rod that is 0 0.550 inches longer than the, than the stock Briggs five horsepower rod and then took that same piston and put the five horsepower rod, the standard length, into a Briggs, a Briggs 3.5, I might be able to make that work. So I got all kinds of crazy stuff going on, and uh, I don't have time for this, and, you know, I really shouldn't be spending money on this. But I have this this old IC Briggs, but it came with the real stubby short 5 8 inch shaft. That's no good. You know, I don't want to run a clutch on a jack shaft. So... I found a deal on eBay for a three-quarter inch crank. Don't know that this is the same diameter yet. I took a gamble on this. But I have a, a three-horsepower crank now, or three-and-a-half horsepower crank, with a three-quarter inch PTO on it. So uh, I got to do some measurement and figuring this out. But uh, I might be able to make this work. So, you know, worst-case scenario, I'll have a, a nice Briggs um, iron liner three horsepower engine with the right crank. So, you know, I, I'm hoping to get that done. That's a long-term project. That's going to go back up in the rafters with the crank. Um, I got too many other things I'm working on. So, um, but I've been thinking about that. You know, I'd love to have a, a hopped up tiny engine. And gosh, if, if, if I could have a, a Camry ground and make seven horsepower out of that engine, That'd be pretty awesome, I think. I, I don't know that I can double it, but I'm certainly going to try. Um, the later engines like this took the same carburetor as the five horsepower engine. This has got what's called a fixed jet carburetor on it, and uh, that's going to be going into the the scrap bin unless some one of you want it. You can have it. Just email me help at ombwarehouse.com. Pay for shipping, and I'll send it to you. You don't get to thank. Sorry. 
um, so I thought about that. Wouldn't wouldn't that be nice to have a, a high revving little three horsepower uh, Raptor Junior engine? So um, you know, and I put one of these Gray Go Garage fancy recoil stickers on there, but uh, you know, I put it on crooked. It's not centered. I can't have that, so it's coming off. But uh, anyway, we'll we'll uh, we'll work on that. And if anybody is is interested in that, um, send me an email. Help at ombwarehouse.com. We'll make it a long term project. Uh, I am going to talk to uh, to the the guys at Wiseco about pistons for that, and uh, see if I can get something that that has a little taller pin height on it. I think I have found it, but I'm not 100% certain. So. Something I'm working on here at the Grego Garage. You know, I, I, I like Briggs engines, as, as you guys know. And, um, you know, ARC makes a small diameter billet flywheel for these. That's the what they call the three horsepower diameter that will go right onto this engine. All the Briggs engines have the same taper. A lot of the cart guys with the Raptors and the Briggs 5s would take the three um, horsepower flywheels and put them right on that engine. So if, if I can make a, a billet... Um, 3.5 uh, Briggs um, IC motor, so it's got the iron liner. Um, I, I know that uh, I can make a screamer out of that. So that that that's long term. But if you're if you're interested and you want to you know work along with me on that, send me an email help at ombwarehouse.com. You know I, I'm already overextended. I've got way too many projects. But um, what the heck's one more, right? So anyway, Briggs, thank you for making better engines than anybody else. I mean, besides Predator, of course. Predator engines are pretty badass, though. <laughs> what 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 a bargain for a hundred bucks, and you can make some big horsepower out of those. Um, next week on the show, um, I'm going to break out the GX160 that I've been working on, that uh, is going to make 22 horsepower or more um, in the Dino Challenge next year. Um, you Arizona guys, don't forget, uh, Hood Ride is this Saturday. So um, look it up on Facebook, um, Arizona Hood Ride, and uh, they'll, they'll be rolling out uh, Saturday. I was going to try and get out there, but uh, my schedule is not working for me. So um, you guys have fun out there. Be safe. Please wear your helmets, okay? It, it, it's no joke if you, if you crash. So, um, yeah. Matt, Matt Christian. Oh, it's Sunday. John, thank you. Sunday is the hood ride in Arizona. John, if you can post up a link here, that'd be great to your Facebook page or for the hood ride. Um, yeah, Corey, um, you, you know, it's interesting. I So, so many people um, come to us and, and it's become such a generic term that, yeah, I have a, a stage one or a stage two. Um, stage one makes a lawnmower engine into a real engine. Um, it, it gives you a couple more horsepower, but, you know, allows those engines to work very, very well. Um, as far as making power, uh, unless you're going Blockzilla 3 or, or one of the aftermarket flathead blocks with a three and a half inch bore, um, not, nothing beats the, you know, the, the, the predator, um, the, those engines, they're a hundred bucks. You pick them up off the shelf and then they're going to ask you, Hey, do you want the warranty? Nah, I'm going to rip the guts out of this thing. So, um, I, I like it. They're easy to build. You can build so much power and they're reliable. Um, whereas some, some of the older flatheads are maybe not as reliable. There's a little more maintenance to them, but, um, yeah, for a hundred bucks, it, it it created this whole mini bike madness and um you know that that brought a lot of those old engines out of the barn old, old mini bikes out of the barns old carts out of the barn and um you know for 100 bucks you throw an engine on there and you're out having fun so th that's what this is all about is having fun so um john bennett thank you for posting up that facebook uh, john has pasted um the facebook events page for the uh, arizona hood ride this sunday okay so, um, okay, let's go get on to another question. Chief Longwin here is talking too long. Um, one thing I want you to know is I'm going to be making a lot more videos coming up, and we're we're going to be on YouTube with it, and the, the YouTube uh, channel will be 
growing exponentially, hopefully. Um, you know, videos take some time. They're not easy to do. Um, one thing that I do that I've showed you guys on Great Go Garage here was that I'm not afraid to make mistakes because I, I, I fancy myself as an average builder. Um, I, I try to be as fearless as I can and do whatever I need to do to get things done. But uh, I am the average builder. You see a lot of tools behind me. Uh, most of them I don't even know how to use or what they are. So, um, you know, I, I make common mistakes and we all learn from it. I learn from it. You learn from it. So, um, yeah, John Cook, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping to get that done. I got a lot of homework to do. And it's math. And I, I, I didn't do well math in school. Um, I, I was a parking lot major. So, anyway, let's get on to the next question. Talking too much. In the 1965 Taco Mini Bike Catalog, you could buy the Frijole as a you assemble it kit. No engine, nothing. What was the retail price in 1965 of the Taco Frijole you build it kit? That was a nice one. And this is the kit that, that had the scrub brake and not the drum brake. Two different prices. It was $10 more if you wanted a drum break. What was the price? Oh, Justin Eichler in the house. $49.95. Would you look at that? Or if you wanted the drum break, it was $59.95. And then you just throw a motor clutch and chain on there and you're motoring. Um, can you imagine? Unbelievable. Um, so, so, such a... An iconic uh, mini bike. Um, what, what's that? Fifty some odd years ago, fifty bucks. I wish I could find one for fifty bucks today. Justin, you have one for fifty bucks for me. Um, you know, I'm I'm low cash, so um, yeah, forty nine ninety five for the U Build It kit. It was already welded and everything. You just had to assemble everything, put an engine in it. You know, paint it, of course. You know, like like uh, like like that bike I got from Dallas that was covered in green house paint. All right, we talked about kill switches. Here, here, here's your your a average clone predator, um, anything six point five coil, um, overhead valve Chinese coil, and it's got the wire hanging off the end. This is the kill wire. Um, got got one of the uh, fire core wires on here from uh, from Joe Petralia. And uh, gonna gonna be testing this here on a, on a bike when I have time. Um, but uh, let, let's not look at this. Let's look at this. If you were to test this with a with a ohm meter, you're gonna find ground everywhere in here. And um, there, there's I don't know any real way to test these. If anybody has a way to test these um, with a, a volt ohm meter, please let me know. Email me help at ombwarehouse.com. I am naive to these things. Here's what I do know. <coughs> this coil wire, this wire, kill wire here, what it does is instead of the, the spark trying to find its path to ground through the electrode of the spark plug, this gives a shorter path to ground to kill the engine. Ground meaning anywhere else on the engine. So with, with this, the guys that take this wire and ground it to the engine, my engine doesn't run. Well, why is that? You know, if, they, if, you, if you attach this to the engine, it'll kill the engine. But if you attach this to a kill switch and then attach the other wire to the either the frame, the other half of the kill switch to either the frame or a portion of the engine, that's what makes your engine stop. That's why I like the positive stop switches like I showed you from this old engine. Um, I can't find that switch no more. Because once you flip it, it's off. It, it, it goes to ground. It's good. One thing that I do is I check my ground. Um, typically, I'm always running switches that have two wires on it, one to the block and then one to the, to the kill wire. But I'll make sure that when I push it, I'll check with the volt ohm meter that it is actually getting a good ground and stopping the engine. Um, so many of us, you know, have friends that say, oh, man, I had a mini bike when I was a kid, and I really like to have one, and gosh, you know, my mom didn't let me have one, and yeah, so they get on and ride it, and then they crash, and then the engine's spinning up to the moon, and they can't find the kill switch. Um, any bike that you have somebody else ride, 
make sure it has a kill switch, make sure that the ground is correct. Make a lot of the, the handlebar mounted switches, they have to go through the handlebar, through the bearing, through everything else. Most of the time that works. Um, for, for me, I'm not satisfied with that because I'm never satisfied. So I always make sure I have a good ground. So I'm always running two wire switches for the kill switch. So that just provides a shorter path to ground and, and shuts off the engine. So um, if you can elaborate on, on, on the coil, I, I know that there's primary and secondary windings in there. Other than that, dude, it's voodoo magic to me. Um, you know, I, I, I know when they don't work and I know when they do work. Let's get on to the next question. Kyle Calkins, you're way late, dude. You're in timeout. Get out of here. Um, last question. Justin Eichler is in the lead. He's got two questions correct. Uh, Easy Eric Lowry is uh, is on the board. Randy Blue's on the board. Let's get it on. This might be worded a little funny. In regards to the belt, what type of torque converter is the Comet 20 series in regards to the belt? It's a hard word to spell, too. In regards to the belt, what kind of torque converter is the Comet 20 series? And I say that because the Big Banana, I put a tw uh, Comet 20 series on there because it's jack shaft mounted driven unit, and I wanted the the hub with the spring to write inboard instead of outboard, comma 30. Ooh, Randy Gumpet in the house, symmetrical. Symmetrical meaning both sides of that belt have the same angle to it. The um, 30 series has one side that's flat and the other side that's angled. The flat side goes towards the engine for you guys that don't know. Um, but it's standard, uh, not standard, but V-belt looking thing on the 20 series. So we, we, we've got a tie tonight. And my, my bonus question may not be fair because Justin's in the house and Justin's a taco frico, okay? So let, let's get on to this last question real quick. And I found this interesting too. Um, the taco burrito name, the taco mini bike burrito model was dropped in 1966. What was the new name for that bike? The burrito was dropped in 1966 from the taco lineup. It wasn't dropped. It was just renamed. Um, Frank, uh, I don't know. Justin? Justin Eichler got it correct. The burrito became the Taco 22. Um, the burrito was a bolt together frame. It, it, it bolted together, you know, down by the axle. No, it bolted together up at the top underneath the seat and up by the forks. When they came out with the 22, it was a welded frame solid. So um, the burrito became the Taco 22. Um, I, I don't know, uh, Mexican folklore, I guess. Um, so in, anyway, good, good pull on that one. Taco, Justin Eichler. Um, <coughs> I will see you, uh, hopefully at max on Sunday for any of you that uh, are in the uh, LA area. Um, Mac has his uh, yard sale every year and uh, weather permitting. So we, we don't know if it's still on or not. So keep up on uh, Facebook on that. But uh, Mac um has more mini bike stuff than anybody else on the planet and um mac will be there mac is in uh, norwalk and uh if you need directions to mac's house uh email me help at ombwarehouse.com and i'll give you mac's address <coughs> excuse me i need some more honey i'm liking that new kool-aid um yeah Drop the chalupa. Um, <laughs> Mac, Mac has more stuff than, um, like the old saying, Carter's has little pills. So if you're in L.A., Mac's in Norwalk uh, off the 5 and uh, Imperial Highway, and um, he'll have more stuff there than you can say, uh, than you can shake a stick at. 
Um, we, we do uh, ha have the website, ombwarehouse.com forward slash the goat um, to go on to uh, our um, YouTube page. So um, follow us on YouTube. That, that's important for us. I'll be doing more videos. We'll get more stuff up. We just got that started, and uh, we'll, we'll be expanding on that. And uh, follow the link. Um, we, we have a link up there as well. Um, subscribe to that, and uh, I'll be um, – at, at least once a week there as well. So we'll uh, we'll, we'll start doing more stuff. A lot, lot of questions. So much of 99% of everything that we sell has no instructions. 100% of everybody that buys this stuff doesn't read them. Um, so we're, we're going to do some basics there. We're, we're going to get back to basics and, and, and have some good fun over there. So the YouTube channel, you'll watch that explode. And, uh, of course, I'm here every Thursday night live on Facebook. I am the Gray Goat. My name is Eric, and you can email me, help at ombwarehouse.com. Um, if I can't help you, I'm just going to say, I'm sorry. I, I, I can't help you. <sighs> that doesn't happen a lot, but uh, if you need help, I am help at ombwarehouse.com. My name is Eric. I am the Gray Goat. If you need anything, let me know. And I'll, and I'll do my best for you. Um, I, I've helped guys rebuild engines via text. Um, you know, we have all the parts. Um, we've got a lot of stuff in stock. I, I, like I say, I've already made all the mistakes, so you don't have to. So if you need help with anything, help at ombwarehouse.com. I am Eric, and uh, I am the Great Goat. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate all of you. Um, if you have any suggestions for the show, if you need to see something besides timing a Tecumseh engine with points, um, send me an email. Um, we'll, let, let, let's talk it over. Let's see what we can do. I, I, I'm open to any suggestions that you have because I have to come up with this stuff every week, right? So like me on Facebook. Tune in next week. I'll be back. We're going to show you some high-performance, shiny stuff next week, okay? Um, thank you all. I appreciate you. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and be safe out there, okay? Well, I was walking down the street one day. A pretty lady stepped right up to me and asked me what the time was on my watch. And I said, does anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody really care about time?